Hi, everybody. I'm Jeremy Pettis, joined on my left by my good friend and colleague, Steve Edelman. We are both endocrinologists. We both have been living with type 1 diabetes since we were 15, and we both work at the not-for-profit that Steve founded called Taking Control of Your Diabetes, joined on my right by my other good friend and colleague, uh, Aaron Kowalski, who's the CEO of Breakthrough T1D. So we got an awesome crew here together. And we're gonna do a video today on you know, misdiagnosis of type one, type two diabetes. Um, so tell us why is this an important topic, Aaron? Well, despite what used to be called juvenile diabetes, type one diabetes happens at any age. Over 50% of people are diagnosed in adulthood. I've met people in their 70s now diagnosed recently with T1D. And what happens is if you're misdiagnosed as having type two as a T1D adult, you don't get the right treatment and you don't get it soon enough. And this is a real phenomenon. Yeah, yeah you may have heard the phrase, lot of latent autoimmune diabetes in adults. And it turns out when you get type one when you're older, your beta cell destruction may be much slower. So you don't crash and burn, you don't go into decay like the three of us did, and there's, you know, and you're older. And it is the most misdiagnosis in diabetes. And many healthcare professionals who are not diabetes specialists just say, oh, you got type two. And they start giving you type two meds and you just basically don't do well for years. And I would say this, that most of the people I've seen that went through that stage made their own diagnosis. Uh -huh. They just got smart and they just read in the New York Times when people complained about their own issues. So you were just telling us a story about exactly that, right? Yeah, I had a friend in Chicago. He has a daughter of T1D. He was diagnosed as type two as an adult in his 50s progressively higher A1C despite trying all different drugs. He was lean, exercising, metformin, you name it. And I finally said to him, you got to go see a different doctor. Goes to another doctor, autoantibody positive, lot of type 1 diabetes. Uh, seven years of misdiagnosis. I mean, what a miss. And we've got to do better. Yeah. yeah. And you know, people with type 1 can respond to type 2 meds. And that even makes it even tougher. And you know, it's, it, there's a lot of variability. Some people go into DK and they lose their, their insulin production pretty quickly and they show themselves as a true type one. And your, your case is, it just took a long time. Yeah, so it can result in like much delayed therapy. And then people get appropriately angry about yeah. it. I have so many people I've met that have come up to me like, you wouldn't believe this story of this person. Yeah. They didn't yeah. diagnose me. It's actually unfortunately common. So. We actually have a video, I believe, of uh, when Aaron was um, first diagnosed, but looks oddly exactly like he does right now, um, of how this unfortunately could go when people first present uh, with high blood sugars, using Aaron as a fun example. So let's roll that clip. Hello, Mr. Uh, Kowalski, how are you? Well, I just got my blood work back, doctor, and my blood sugar is over 200. I'm super nervous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Classic case of type 2 diabetes. I'm going to send a script of metformin to your pharmacy, and you need to meet with the educator to start talking about exercising a little bit and maybe eating a little better. But I already run every day. and Yeah, I eat. we all do our best, but we could probably do a little bit better. So why don't you tighten it up, Kowalski, and I'll see you in six months. Thanks. You know, that's funny, but it's not too much of an exaggeration. It is so common, and we just need to educate our healthcare professionals a lot more. Yeah. I mean, to be kind to the healthcare professionals, they're Why so they used to seeing <laughs> an adult equals type 2 diabetes, yeah. and it takes them having their antenna up that something's not quite right here. No family history, yeah. diabetes, all these kinds of things. So we're trying to move away from that scenario to maybe what would be more of an ideal one, um, where we have a, a different, even more uh, handsome uh, doctor uh, <laughs> running through this. So let's uh, run that clip. Aaron, good to see you. What's going on? Hi, doctor. I got a blood work back and it had high blood sugar, over 200. I'm really worried about it. Yeah, you know, I saw that. And it's hard to know exactly what's going on. Um, you could have type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, but there's some things that just don't fit for type 2. I mean, you're young. Um, you don't have a family history of type 2. So we're going to order some blood work, some things that are called type 1 diabetes antibodies and a test called a C-peptide that I can go over with you. So I want you to get that done today, and then we can see you back real soon to talk about the results. Awesome. Thanks, Doc. You're so much better than that last doctor I saw on his ridiculous mustache. Right on. So 
So, great. Um, so, Steve, we actually see these patients quite a bit. So, what are some things that you're looking for of, hey, this might actually be a type 1 and not a type 2? You know, we've discussed that in our post-clinic conference a thousand times. Is this person a type 1 or type 2? You know, first of all, are they thin? Is there a family history of diabetes? Do they have the classic high triglyceride, low HDL cholesterol problems that people with type 2 have, hypertension. So it's, it's really a culmination of looking at the patient, looking at their past history, and just getting a feel that this person just doesn't look or act or like a type 2. Mm -hmm. Having your antenna up, checking the antibodies can help get that diagnosis yep. right, and then get to appropriate treatment. So what's going on at Breakthrough T1D in this area? And well, we're proud to partner with you guys at TCOID, and we're actually funding studies looking at how common is this, combing databases, doing uh, registries, because ultimately we, Breakthrough T1D, are really trying to focus and help people at all ages and stages of the disease. And if you're diagnosed in your 50s with T1D, we want to make sure you get the right treatment as soon as humanly possible. So proud to partner with you guys and try to get the word out there sooner to more people. Yeah. So that's fantastic. And if you've out there had experienced something similar, we're sorry. Unfortunately, it's very common. But hopefully you got the diagnosis right. Welcome to the team. We're glad to have you. Um, so thanks to Breakthrough T1D, Aaron, you, Steve, as always. And hope you guys enjoy the video.